This is a special video on the groundbreaking discovery and research undertaken by the amazing curatorial team at Hiva Castle, Dr. Eisen Palmer, Dr. Owen Emerson, and Kate McCaffrey. It all started with the research done by Kate McCaffrey during her AMA thesis, where she discovered the secret inscriptions that Anne Boleyn wrote and left in her own book of hours. She discovered that Catherine of Aragon and Anne Boleyn, one of the most iconic rivals of all time, both received, sometimes after 1527, the production of it, the books of hours produced by the French printer Germain Ardouin. In a more recent research quest, the amazing team of Eva Castle discovered that the Book of Hours held at the Wren Library, Cambridge, was also part of the same production batch by Ardouin. So here we have three books that are linking three most important Tudor players at Henry VIII's court, Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, and Thomas Cromwell. But it's not just it. The discovery goes beyond. Dr. Alison Palmer noticed the resemblance between the Wren book of ours and the book on the famous portrait made by Alban of Thomas Cromwell. Now this is remarkable because in their research and in the press conference that they gave yesterday at Hever Castle that I intended myself, it was absolutely glorious. The most recent book, Aubin's Hide and Jam, with Just Catherine, Thomas Cromwell, Lost Book. They are making the claim that the Wren book and the book of the portrait are one and the same. I don't want to ruin for you the journey that they take us yesterday because they wrote everything in this amazing book where they explain to you exactly how they came with these conclusions and I really really cannot recommend enough of these books. Please the link down below it's for you to have a look at this amazing book yourself and look at their discovery. Now what I would like to do in this video is for myself to review what I think, what are my thoughts about this discovery, what am I taking and where can I maybe, you know, try to participate myself or try to answer some of the amazing questions that they asked yesterday? Because any groundbreaking research will always ask more questions than they answer. For me personally, the thing that I find it the most incredible about the discovery that the Heather Castle team made is all these incredible links between the French court and the English court. As you know, I'm writing a book on Anne Boleyn and the first part of my book obviously focuses on her years in France. But the whole book is about her ties and her relationship uh, with France, with the French ambassadors, with the French royal family. So for me to have this kind of research being done in terms of discussing, you know, who commissioned these books, why are the printers French? Why, um, you know, uh, why are there so many elements um, linking Francis I through Pierre Mongo, please read the book, Ardouin, Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII, Thomas Cromwell, Catherine of Aragon. These are the type of questions where I've always wondered the influence of the French on the English. For me, what's so interesting is not so much about the influence of the French on the Reformation, on the Enrician Reformation. I think it is a more complex one. It is a relationship that um, goes beyond, you know, in many ways religion, that goes beyond religious beliefs, that goes beyond uh, religious changes. And for me, is all these questions where, where Francis I, maybe his mother, Louise of Savoy, maybe Margaret of Angoulême, then it raises the question, especially when you look at the time, 1529, 1530, 1531, 1532. Obviously, there's another name that comes up in my mind. And this name is Jean du Bellay. Jean du Bellay, who is a French ambassador, who is, you know, um, very, very close to the Bolin faction, who has a lot of admiration for Anne until the end. 
And so these are all these questions that I found absolutely amazing. For me, the whole press conference, the whole book, um, the findings make sense. I know there are still lots of questions and in the world of history, we all have to be a bit skeptical when it comes to new findings, new, because there are so many unknowns. However, the way they've conducted their research is so very convincing. And as I said, it raises more questions. We have the amazing Dr. Joanne Paul as well, working on a book on Thomas More. She revealed herself that, you know, Thomas More had also a book of hours that it's in the, in the United States. So, you know, could we imagine that there were lots of books of hours given at the same time at the English court from the French, but again, that always raises the question, for what purpose and who commissioned it? And in many ways, you know, you can think that it's a way of doing patronage, but it's also a way of showing political intelligence. It's a way of showing that you are a very important political player at the English court with very strong ties with the French. Or it might be, if it's a French person like Jean Dubélet, and de Montmorency, you know, because we could think it, it and de Montmorency is the primary advisor to um, Francis I, a very important political player at the time. If it's Louise of Savoy or Marguerite of Angoulême, again, it shows their interest in what's happening uh, at the English court. It also shows their interest in dealing with English and like you could almost think that these are uh, books of ours or like gifts, gifts to kind of like bond the two courts together and that's at that period we know that the relationship and the friendship and the alliance between the French and English is very strong. So that's why I'm absolutely fascinated. I cannot recommend for you to go to Hever Castle and see these books in person. You have the Book of Hours of Anne Boleyn next to the Book of Hours of Thomas Cromwell. This is something historical. Thomas Cromwell as the curatorial team of Eva Castle said yesterday at the press conference is a maker and breaker of queens. So it's quite a very important moment to have these two books reunited um, and it also shows maybe a, a new power dynamic, uh, relation dynamic between Anne Boleyn and Thomas Cromwell and that is why it is absolutely so fascinating. Please get the book make yourself your own opinion about it, about the findings, about the research. Please keep following the amazing research that they're doing because I really believe that more is coming. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want more historical content and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.